Okay, a few days ago we were learning about Muksa, and what we started learning about was called Keli Shemalachte Lehetet, which means a vessel is pri whose primary use is for something forbidden, I mean, sorry, permissible, so then you can move it basically for any reason, as long as it, there's a reason to move it. You can't just move it for no reason at all. So we're talking about the difference between bicycles and tricycles and those games that you're allowed to play on Shabbos, if they're not muksa, if you're not allowed to play them on Shabbos, that you keep score, you're not allowed to play with them on Shabbos. So, for instance, there's an interesting argument in Aloha is a ball, a ball, is it muksa on Shabbos? So there's a big argument in Aloha, but al Rebbe is lenient, and he says that the minig is that the ball is not muksa. I'm not saying necessarily it's very shabbos to play ball on Shabbos, but halachically, you're allowed to play ball, so therefore ball is not muksa. Now you have an issue of carrying, but let's say there's a Erev, or you're in an enclosed area, and the ball doesn't go out of the enclosed area. So technically, you would be allowed to play ball on Shabbos. But there is an interesting thing. For instance, you can't play soccer, though, not on dirt and not on grass. Why can't you play soccer on dirt or grass? Because inevitably you're going to be ripping up grass when you kick the ball and you're running and you're kicking, you know, when you're not using your head, you're using your foot and you're kicking, so inevitably you're going to, it's like called a psychration, like we learned. It's for sure going to happen. So therefore you're going to be ripping up grass and Shabbos, which is forbidden. So it's not that the soccer itself is forbidden, but um, ripping up grass is forbidden. Or if you're playing on dirt, when you kick it and you make holes in the ground, that's part of plowing. So again, but if let's say you play soccer on, gra on a cemented area, so there's no problem of, so logically you would be allowed to play soccer on Shabbos. So soccer ball is not moksa. Therefore, therefore, for instance, huh? Playing soccer? No, only if you're shlamazel. Okay. Huh? I agree. They should. Okay, so you play with him. Okay, um, now chess, checkers, monopoly, board games, well, like we said, that you don't keep score and there's no desecration of Shabbos, so automatically uh, they're not muksa. Now, what happens if you have, you're into astronomy and you want to, you have a telescope. You want to see eclipse going on or something's going on. So a telescope, binoculars, microscopes, as long as they're not, as long as they're only mechanical, because if they're electrical, then obviously you're moving it, you're changing electrical currents. But if you have a regular telescope, a microscope, or uh, binoculars, that they're manual, that means you only move them without electricity, so those are definitely not muks on Shabbos, because you're allowed to look in a telescope on Shabbos. Can you look at the moon? With your eyes, you mean? No. I'm saying, yeah, you, why not? No. What you probably heard was that you're not supposed to look at a lunar eclipse. Oh, Good question. Because the Jews are likened to the moon. So therefore, when there's a lunar eclipse that you're blocking the moon, it's not a mazel thing for the Jewish people. No, a lunar eclipse when you block the moon. Not a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse is when the sun is blocked. Lunar eclipse is when the moon is blocked. One minute. What? I don't know. You ask the guys. This is blocks the moon. The way the sun is moving, it blocks the moon. You don't see it. Now, halachically, you're not supposed to do use a wind up. You're not allowed to wind up a toy on Shabbos. Why? Because technically, you make it not usable into usable. Nevertheless, that toy is not muktza. Why? Because you can use it without winding it up. You know, you can use it without winding it up. So therefore, it wouldn't be muktza. Huh? What? What? That's why I said it's not. 
That's why he said it's not muksa. The reason why you're not winding it is because he said it's not useful without winding it. No, because, no. What you're winding it to do, it can't do if you don't wind it. But the toy itself is usable. If you wind the toy, that makes it walk, yeah? Without you winding it, it can't walk. Now you're making it walkable. That's fixing. But the toy itself, you can play with it without the, it moving. You can play with it by itself, so it's not muksa. Same thing with marbles. Marbles basically are not muksa. Now, another interesting thing is brooms. Now it depends. Years ago, the brooms were made from straw. And the straw brooms broke, and then the din was in Shkhnarach. You're not allowed to use them on Shabbos because when it breaks, you're going to stick it back up. Stick into the back, the thing into the broom. And then you're going to be fixing it. So then it's not a problem. But if you have, let's say, a nylon broom, a synthetic broom, okay, you cannot sweep dirt with it because then again you're making holes in the ground and that's part of plowing but if you have let's say this floor tiled floor or whatever uh, then you would be allowed to use a broom on Shabbos that's, that's nylon bristles and bristles that don't break so then you would be allowed to use it on Shabbos so therefore they're not moksha making holes in the ground is related to plowing yes Plowing, by definition, means you make a hole in the ground. That's what... It doesn't matter. No, but the, therefore, that then is... It doesn't mean making a hole in order to plant. The malacha plowing is a constructive making a hole. So therefore, anytime you make a hole that you want, or you don't want, but it's for sure going to happen, then it's called making... Uh, it's plowing. That's what the Moloch is. Doesn't matter, you can still, you broom dirt, or you kick dirt, it makes a hole. Doesn't have to be a massive size. Chedesh Koshua, if you plow a drop, it's, it's called the Moloch of, of plowing. So you're not allowed to walk on the sand? You're allowed to walk on the sand, because the sand you're not making holes in. No, 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 it's not like dirt. Huh? No, sand, sand, no. Walking on sand is like walking on grass. But even when you walk on sand, okay, you can't build with sand on Shabbos. Like, you know, you go to a sandbox and you want to build a, a, a sand castle, okay? So then what, in order to build a sand castle, you have to take water, otherwise the sand is not gonna, it's gonna fall apart. So you have to mix the sand with water, and then it becomes solid, and then you can build a castle, right? But that is the malach of lush, which is called kneading, K-N-E-A-D. You're mixing flour and water together. But just walking on sand, sand you're not making holes into it. I'll give you another example. Somebody that, let's say, is allowed to go in a wheelchair on Shabbos, you're allowed to go on a wheelchair over dirt because you're not making holes, you're just indenting the earth. You're not making holes, you're just pushing it down. And that's the same thing that happens with sand. So you're allowed to walk at the sand on Shabbos, you can't mix sand with water because then you have the, the malach of uh, kneading, like flour and water, which is kneading. Now aerosol cans, you're allowed to use on Shabbos, so therefore they're not moksa, okay? So for instance, any spray, like somebody wants to use air fresheners, room deodorants, uh, deodorant sprays, mouth, mouthwash sprays, perfume sprays, hair sprays, hair sprays could be a problem. It depends. It might be a Shiloh building there here, but other aerosol cans are allowed to be used on Shabbos, so therefore they're not moksa. But for instance, insect, repelling the insect repellent that doesn't kill bugs it just repels them they don't come and bite you that you can put on a Shabbos if it's a spray but you can't kill 
You can't use um, insect killing, whatever you call those things, because then you're killing animals on Shabbos. That's forbidden. But repelling, that you're allowed to do. Matthew, what did you want? Um, so you said, are we allowed to play Fortnite in the double Shabbos? What? Fortnite. No video games on Shabbos, no. Well, I'm not religious. I'm not so much about it. I don't want to say it's on tape, but you're a liar. You are. Every Jewish show my Shabbat. Some know about it, some don't. Okay. Um, perfumes, because most opinions say you're allowed to put perfume on your body on Shabbos, so therefore, again, they're not moksha. Um, artificial plants is an interesting thing. Plants that grow, plants that grow, not artificial plants, plants that grow in earth are moksa and Shabbos. Cut flowers are not moksa and Shabbos. Hair gel? Hair gel, any gel is forbidden to use on Shabbos. It's a malacha mamachik or mamareach, which is an offshoot of mamachik, which means you're smoothening surfaces. So you're not allowed to put a cream on. You can't smear a cream on Shabbos. You can dab it on if you don't cheat and just dab it on. Then you can even close it with a gauze. But to smear cream of any sort, you could apply power powder on your hair. The question is taking it off, but but you could technically do it. In fact, I was teaching, I teach in the girls' high school here one period a week, and then we were learning halacha, and they asked me, there's a, because you can't, you're not allowed to take a shower on Shabbos, a yom whatever, so they wanted to know, there's a hairspray that um, dries the hair, it takes out the oil. So you spray it on. So they asked me if you can use it on Shabbos. So I told them, bring it into class, you need to see it. I heard about it, I need to see it. So the next day, I mean next week, I only teach once a week. So they brought it into class and I said, okay, I looked at it and said, okay, now show me how it works. So <laughs> one girl spritzed it on her hair um, and there was an issue with it, but it's not a very big issue. I would say you could do it. Just doing nothing else. You can't brush it afterwards or comb it afterwards. But just spraying it on the head and leave it there, it's fine. But gel, you can't mousse your head. No, because it's a cream. You're using a cream on Shabbos. And then you're smearing a cream, which is forbidden. What? Oil, you want to rub oil into your head? Oil, if it's... Okay, certain hand soaps are creamy. Okay. Those should not be used on Shabbos. Okay? The only way that you could perhaps use it on Shabbos is if you, let's say, you squirt it, you know, take it off in the container on your, on your hand, and before you rub your hand together, you take a lot of water in the next hand, and then you put it together, so then you're liquefying the, the cream, and it's not creamy anymore, it's liquidy. But I'll give you an example. You know, the, the laundry, the, the dish, the detergent for dishes. Dish soap. Dish soap, yeah. It's very, very liquidy. A lot of the hand soaps come out in the foam or they're much thicker. So that type of soap that you wash dishes with is for sure allowed to do on, use on Shabbos. I mean, can't say everybody, this is the way we hold it, you're allowed to use it on Shabbos. Okay? So, but some of the creamy soaps, you have to dilute it first before you can smear it on, on your body, on your hand or whatever. What about the wax? What? Vax? 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 Gel, but gel is gel. Gel, you know how to use in shabbat. Not gel. What? Vax. 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 Wax. Wax? Wax is smearing. Wax is real smearing. Isn't like using the game also? I have to see what these things are. 
Moshe Shonar says, you can't even close up a barrel that has an opening. You can close on Shabbos like with a wood stopper or metal stopper, but you can't close it with wax. Why? Because when you stuff a hole with wax, inevitably you're smearing it. You're smoothing the wax, which is forbidden. So anything that's creamy that you're going to be smoothing out, that you're not allowed to use in the shop. If it's gel, that's, then it's not gel. So if it's liquid, like oil, let's say, yeah, you can put it. But you can't squeeze liquid out of your hair on Shabbos. Right. So you know, here, like baby oil, can you apply baby oil? Baby oil, yeah. Baby oil is very liquidy. What's your stand about? I don't have any stands. There's no Chabad stand. You can't use toothpaste on Shabbos, unless if it's liquid toothpaste or liquid mouth. Again, it's the same concept, you're smearing. It's a cream, it's a paste, and then you put it on your teeth, you're smearing it. You know what, let me tell you something. I want to tell you a rule in Aloha. When people quote from people that passed away already, unless if it's written in his book, unless if it's written in his book, you can't believe it. Yeah, no, I'm saying it, but I say it, it, it. I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs>